In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at how to combine forces. In this case, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated situation than the previous lesson, where there is a resultant force in both the vertical and in the horizontal directions, which will result in an overall resultant force that acts at an angle to the vertical or horizontal. So, for example, consider this airship where we have a thrust of 700 newtons acting to the right, right, that's in the positive direction, and an air resistance of 300 newtons acting to the left, while the weight of the airship acts in 6,000 newtons downwards, and an upthrust of 6,300 newtons acting in the upward direction. So first of all, let's consider uh, the resultant force in the horizontal direction. Okay, so remember that the thrust of 700 newtons is acting to the right, so that's a positive force, whereas the air resistance is acting to the left, and that will be a negative force. So we have 700 newtons minus 300 newtons, giving a resultant force in the horizontal direction of 400 newtons. That's positive. That means it's acting to the right, while if we consider the resultant force in the vertical direction, we have an upthrust of 6,300 newtons that's acting upwards, that's the positive direction, and the weight of 6,000 newtons acting downwards, that's in the negative direction, so that's a resultant force of 6,300 newtons minus 6,000 newtons, giving a resultant force of 300 newtons. That's a positive number, so that's acting in the upward direction. Right now, to find out what the overall resultant force is, we need to combine the horizontal resultant force with the vertical resultant force. Now, to do that, we need to consider, again, the forces that are acting on this air balloon and we're going to represent that air balloon by a single point center of mass and with the resultant force of 300 newtons acting upwards in the vertical direction and a resultant force of 400 newtons acting to the right in the horizontal direction and what we need to do is to represent those forces on a grid diagram. So in your AQA GCSC exams you would not be expected to use trigonometry in this type of question as it cannot be assumed that all of the students have that sort of maths. Although most of you would probably be able to do this with trig, no problem. Um, however, you probably be asked to represent this information on a type of grid like this where you're given a scale. Um, in this particular case each grid square uh, represents 100 newtons. So you've got to kind of convey this information here onto the grid square, so let's do that. So we have a resultant force of 400 newtons in the horizontal direction, that's acting to the right here, and then followed by 300 newtons in the vertical direction upwards, right? That's four grid squares in the horizontal direction and then three grid squares in the vertical direction. So the resultant force acting on the airship is the combination of these two vectors. The horizontal vector of 400 newtons to the right followed by the vertical vector of 300 newtons upwards and the overall resultant force acting on the airship is the combination of these two vectors. Let's represent that in green. Okay, so that is the resulting vector. Now in this now, in this type of problem, you know, you might be asked to calculate the magnitude of the overall resultant force acting on the airship. Now, you would probably not be expected to use trigonometry in your GCSE physics exam. What you would be expected to do in this type of problem, where you've got a grid is, and a scale, is to physically measure the length of this vector with a ruler. You would do that, and you would see that it 
corresponds to exactly five centimeters. This is four centimeters, this is three centimeters, this is five centimeters. That's the three, four, five triangle. And then you would equate that using the scale to 500 newtons. Okay, so we just write that there is the overall resultant vector. And now, if they were to ask you the angle, then you would use your protractor yeah, to measure the angle of the resulting vector, okay, using a protractor. You would not be expected to calculate that using trigonometry.